Hello, and welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Len Silverstein from Universal Mindful. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry-leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTALKS for 20% off your purchase. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity and this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management, to understand how they got there and to be talking with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today, we are joined by Len Silverson, a consultant with Universal Mindful, and normally this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest, but in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Len, hello and welcome. (laughs) Hello. Really nice to be here. I'm really glad to share with all of you. Uh, I'm so glad that you're here. I've known you for a while. You've come to and speak at a lot of our conferences. And uh, and we were just talking about it a little bit in the pre-show. You're famous and well-known for your Zen with Len sessions at our data governance conferences. What are those? You know, I love doing it. Uh, the title is usually, what the heck does Zen have to do with data? <laughs> <laughs> and what I normally say is everything, because yeah. uh, data is really just stuff that we're given. It's right. all the stuff that we're given. And that's what Zen is. You look at everything that we're given, and you're with it. You're with all of these gifts. So, uh, And then the other reason I do these Zen with Len uh, sessions, and I, I do it at conferences. I also do it uh, uh, through my company, Zen with Len is to share ways of being mindful in a fun way, in a fun oh. way. You know, oh, uh, I love it. Yeah, and, and they are so fun. Well, yeah. but let's, let's, talk, let's talk about uh, your consulting side of the world. So you're a consultant at Universal Mindful. It's your company. So tell yeah. me about Universal Mindful. Yeah, so we're an organization uh, that's, that's mainly myself, uh, providing human behavior and corporate culture mindfulness specifically in the data arena. So my clients realize that their success is based upon their culture, collaboration, negotiations, how people handle themselves. And I have uh, focused for the last 20 years on how I can help organizations and people be effective at the very foundational level. Now, I've also had decades of experience in the technical sides of data management and data governance. And as you know, I wrote several books on it. And after after decades, what I realized is that the technical aspects of of data, uh, in my opinion, are much less important than the foundational aspect of how we get along together, how we collaborate, how we handle conflict, how we communicate, how we uh, build trust, how we understand our core motivations and our core purposes, how we are aware in the data space. So I have a framework that includes all of those things with tons of tools and techniques that I teach in webinars and seminars and in, in consulting. We actually practice uh, developing these skills. Oh, that's so great. You know, we've heard from so many um, people I've interviewed so far uh, for this podcast about how communication is so important. Mm -hmm. Those people skills are so important. It's not in in the data world, in the data management jobs, just like you're talking about, it's not just being able to manage the data. It's, it's, It's because you can't do that without those, that communication. Right. Right. And, and and I think a lot of people are unaware of the idea that there's these all of these tools like specific, in, in all the areas that I mentioned, but like mm-hmm. in communication, I use Burlow's model of communication and mirroring, labeling, and calibrating questions. And uh, 
There's all of these tools about body language that are so important in communicating that uh, very often we just don't know. Yeah, it's so very true. Oh, that's exciting. Well, so Len, tell me, what does your typical work week look like then? How is it, How are you working with your customers, your clients to to build these skills? Yeah, so uh, traditionally I'll set up a uh, initial um Ideally, in-person session. So mm-hmm. I'll usually fly out to them, and we usually do a half-day session to start. And I share this framework of six areas that I've already shared with you. It's uh, awareness, purpose, motivation, trust, conflict, and um, uh, and um, overall skills in in um, uh, in collaborating and negotiating. Mm-hmm. And uh, what we'll do is do uh, a training, a working session on these skills so people know the techniques and they know the tools. And then generally I meet with clients every couple of weeks to uh, 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 practice those skills ongoing. It's usually only like 50 minutes every, every two weeks. So mm-hmm. it's an incremental skill and on each one of those sessions, We'll focus on one of those areas and reinforce the tools and see what they've done the last couple of weeks. Uh, very often on the off weeks, I'll meet with the team that's in, that's trying to uh, be the champion over culture, and we'll strategize about how to best uh, develop culture in organizations. And by the oh, way, I, well, yeah. after 40 years in data management, what I found is that the most successful uh, uh, organizations um, have one thing in common. They understand and are able to implement these cultural skills. It's, it's the number one factor. As a matter of fact, all the keynotes I've ever seen agree on that. And yet it's really interesting. I don't see, um, uh, uh, it, it's actually rare for companies to do this, to actually invest and say, Hey, we really want to learn this culture or, uh, for the day. Data profession, and there's inevitable things that happen in the data profession. We go try to into implement enterprise wide standards on the project. When they say, leave us alone, we're doing agile. There's all of these inevitable things that happen. So I focus on, hey, let's take the inevitable things that happen and share very uh, important uh, ways to, uh, to effectively deal with this and be successful. Oh, very cool. Well, let's back it up a bit, a little bit here, Len. So tell me, like, when you were very young, so like six years old, <laughs> was this the dream? <laughs> okay. Was this the dream? Did you say, I'm going to grow up and and be a consultant uh, in in collaboration? <laughs> okay, so I grew up in a New York Jewish family. And when I was six years old, uh-huh. uh, people asked me, uh, uh, what did I want to be when I grew up? Uh-huh. And uh, I remember I used to say, I want to be a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> and, I and love like, it. I want to be <laughs> successful. <laughs> and, uh, and I think that uh, I think that lasted uh, through my 20s. I worked very, very hard, studied hard, went to really good schools and, and companies and and uh, I think in my late twenties, a light bulb went on. Uh, yeah. you know, oh my gosh, uh, life is so much more than just achievement and success. It's, oh, it's that's yeah. not the core uh, of what life is about. The, the core of life is life. <laughs> How do we live well? How do we yeah. live well? Yeah. Uh, Redefining success. Yeah. Redefining success, and that's what I teach in both my Zen with Len business and my universal mindfulness is how do we live well oh. which by the way was aristotle's purpose he said so i figure i'm in good company if i haven't seen <laughs> indeed <laughs> well, well so tell me about that so you're you know as you're getting older and you're teens so like what a passion and is you getting into high school and onwards you know what did you start studying what were you studying yeah so let's see i really liked math when i was mm-hmm. uh younger uh mm-hmm. so in um, in high school, I excelled in math. Uh, I, and, and, um, that, that idea of being successful led to, to after I got an accounting degree, uh, oh, uh-huh. um, 
And of course, you know, I had to graduate with honors and be successful and all this stuff. Uh, and, uh, and I thought, oh, I could be a CPA, but you know what? Uh, people in sales, they make a lot of money. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I was like, okay, let's follow yeah. my dream. <laughs> you know? So I went into sales and yeah. I sold insurance and I sold calculators and I sold computers. Wow. And, uh, and I actually did well in sales. And it's a really good background because when you really study sales, you realize it's not about pushing, it's about understanding and it's about building mm -hmm. rapport and it's mm -hmm. about fulfilling the needs and wants of people. When I, and then when I really got that message, then I said, you know what? I want to do that a different way. And I actually switched careers. Uh, it, it was actually a major shift in my, in my, in my career because I was uh, making extremely good money in my last sales job selling computers back in the 80s, 1980s. Oh, yeah, sure. So I was making six-figure income, and I was like so high on the horse. And I thought, you know <laughs> what? Um, I want to do something more than sell. I want to build. I want to mm. create, and I want to build computer applications. Uh, ah. And um, so I, uh, I decided to go back to school yeah. and leave my cush uh, job. And, I, yeah. and I, so I just quit and I said, you know what? I'm going back to school full time for a master's in computer science. Wow. And, uh, and that was pretty tough to, uh, to let go of that. I'm sure. Um, and then I uh, and then I got out of uh, my master's degree, and I thought, ah, I want to get a the best job. So I took a job at that time it was the big eight. Now it's the big four. You know, one of these big uh, yeah. uh, consulting firms, and I worked on hundred hour weeks, and I made a quarter of what I used to make a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But I learned a lot. I learned a lot. Uh, yeah. So what were you doing in that in that first job? Yeah, I was uh, focused on data still. I got my master's degree focused on uh, uh, database. Uh, and um, I was inspired by one of my teachers who was the dean of the, of the school at Rensselaer mm -hmm. Polytechnic Institute in New York. And uh, I was inspired by my teacher, Dr. Tim Martin. Uh, I was still uh, always inspired by him. And he was this... Uh, it was this guy with a big handlebar mustache, and he had written several books and databases. And fun guy, for fun, he'd go out and and sell hot dogs in a hot dog stand uh, when he wasn't doing his database <laughs> work. And I, by the way, I'm a big advocate of fun. I, <laughs> so that's important. Uh, all my courses, I say, hey, I want to be of service. We want to accomplish so much, but uh, let's also have fun. Yeah, uh, that's uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Tim was like that. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, after I had written some books and, and done articles, he called me back to the school and I did a presentation for the school. Oh, nice. Uh, he, he was so proud. He's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that's awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, so well, yeah. tell me. So you're you're coding now for a consulting company out of college after you get your master's. Right, like mostly right. In, in databases. Yeah, well, I started. They they have you actually. You're right. They set you up coding in COBOL. Then, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Again, it was in the '80s. Uh, yeah. And uh, so I was busy coding, and then I gradually uh, moved myself into the area that I studied, into database design, mm -hmm. and focused on database design. And then switched to a uh, this uh, uh, startup company. Uh, that was the end of the eighties. A very small startup company, uh, six people in a rented office. And I happened to be in Australia at that time, and I was exploring it. Actually, they were a little bit known in the United States, but completely unknown in Australia. Uh, uh, little six people in a rented office. Uh, a little company called Oracle. <laughs> wow so, so talk I, about getting led, in on the ground level <laughs> yeah i led the uh oracle um uh australia and um uh, pacific region consulting and training practice for for this company that just skyrocketed 
uh, so oh, that was that's amazing. Yeah. 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 So, um, so, so t- were you, so what were you doing for them and then what was next? Yeah. So what I did for them is I, uh, led their consulting and training. So I mm-hmm. hired consultants and I, mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, managed them and I sent them all over the Pacific region, the Solomon islands and, yeah. and uh, I mean, all over the place, uh, yeah. uh, all over Australia, and uh, I would do high-level consulting myself, but very little. Mostly, I was managing and sending out consulting uh, 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 clients, and mm-hmm. um, uh, so it was rewarding to be to see this real high success. But I, um, I really wanted to do the work myself, uh, mm-hmm. and I, yeah. uh, I said, you know. I want to be hands-on. I just want to be hands-on. So um, um, I left there. I actually uh, looked around at different opportunities. I had um, uh, another opportunity to be head of worldwide consulting for um, another company that was well known at the time, Sequin Computers, and uh, they're they're mm-hmm. not they're not now. But uh, I, yeah. I, they gave me this really cushy job to be head of consulting and training over worldwide operations all over the world. And I said, you know what? Um, I want to do hands-on. I took a job instead of that. People thought I was nuts, but I took a job instead of that being a DBA at a, at oh. a local insurance company. <laughs> wow. As a contract consultant. Uh, wow. Yeah. Uh, at, Cause I wanted to do the work hands-on. Uh, yeah. And I said, I want to be a really solid technician in, in, uh, in data. Uh, so I worked on mainframes and, and all, all sorts of uh, uh, environments, uh, troubleshooted and did all this work on, on databases. Wow. That's, so that's very cool. So, so did you start expanding your data skills from there? I did. I did. I kept on studying very hard. Mm-hmm. My whole career, I worked uh, I worked a lot, a lot of hours, so I worked very, very hard there, and I would study and um, uh, and work. And um, um, as a matter of fact, uh, while I was working, I started writing, and I started writing books. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, what was your first book? So the first book is called the uh, the Data Model Resource Book, and. Mm-hmm. You know, I had this idea, this was actually in the 90s. Uh, so in the early 90s, I was looking out and uh, I had a friend that lived near me, uh, who's also well known in the industry, Bill Inman. Yeah. And w- we were friends and I knew he had wrote books and I talked to him for about five years. And I said, Bill, you gotta write a book on template models. There's no template models available. Like we really need these template database designs. And um, he said, yeah, 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 yeah. And he'd go along with it. And, uh, and after about five years of telling him that, uh, I get a call from his editor over at Wiley Publishing. Yeah. And the call was, uh, Bill Inman says you want to write a book. <laughs> and I actually, actually never thought about that. I, <laughs> and I got the call and I said, yeah, okay. Yeah, I want to write a book. <laughs> So I worked on that book very, very hard. And uh, Bill was a a, a co-author on that. So it gave it a little bit of crud. Uh, Nice. And um, uh, and I I worked on it and um, uh, we published it and it it got, uh, it it got a lot of acknowledgement. Uh, And then uh, I worked on the, the new edition of the book, uh, twice the size and twice as many models. So they were all template models. It's still, it's first edition was published in 1997. It's still being, uh, uh, sold, uh, uh so, yeah. uh, and it, it got on the bestsellers list and, uh, uh, it, uh, it's done quite well. Uh, and then I published two, two additional volumes of that for industry models. And also for the underlying patterns in data, so mm-hmm. volume, volumes one, two, and three, uh, and uh, so very rewarding, but um, uh, an amazing, amazing amount of work. I put tens of thousands of hours into these books. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, it's no easy feat. So congrats. And uh, I'm sure they're being consumed even more now. We're seeing a lot of new data modelers out there looking for for help. Yeah, and the CDs that give you the SQL for the uh, for the book also. Those are other products that are that are being sold still. Uh, so <laughs> it's um, it's uh, my, my, uh, the publisher said, you know what? That's unbelievable. It's almost thirty years to have uh, books in publication for that long. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, so I've been blessed. I've been blessed, and, oh, and it's that's... also a great gift. Like uh, I hear of companies. Um, like uh, one company that I did consulting for. So, so dec for decades, what I was doing is uh, helping people jumpstart their database designs and doing mm -hmm. data modeling and also helping their data governance and uh, common glossaries and, and all of this work. And I had all these tools and templates. Um, and uh, I remember one, one of my clients said, uh, their whole family knew me. They had all read the books and used the books. And by the way, they use the books to build the software product that they sold their whole company based upon the, the models that I published. Uh, oh, I've heard wow. all sorts yeah. of stories like that. So it's really yeah. nice to have um, influenced people's lives yeah. like that. More and more companies are considering investing in data literacy education, but still have questions about its value, purpose, and how to get the ball rolling. Introducing the newest monthly webinar series from Dataversity, Elevating Enterprise Data Literacy, where we discuss the landscape of data literacy and answer your burning questions. Learn more about this new series and register for free at dataversity.net. That is very nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's got to be feel rewarding, you know. Very, very yeah. rewarding. Yeah. Uh. Uh, but, but about 20 years ago, I made another major, major switch. Yeah. Uh, so from the 80s and 90s and 2000s and, and even in the 2000 teens, I was focused on uh, on databases. But then mm -hmm. in 2004, when I was asked to do a keynote, I thought long and hard about it. And they said, you could do a keynote about anything you want. And I said, OK, let me see what's most important. And I started talking about human behavior. Because mm -hmm. what I was noticing in my clients is, yeah, you could jumpstart your database design. You could jumpstart your data governance effort. That's fine. And I have methodologies for it and, and all these technical tools available to me. But what I noticed is that um, the ones that were successful um, at the core, it's because of the human behavior. It's because of the people. Uh, that was the number one factor. So I gradually shifted my career from universe. It used to be called universal data models. Mm -hmm. And I gradually over time shifted it uh, to the point that I'm at now where um, I really don't, I, I'll answer questions on data models or, or yeah, things like sure. that. But, uh, but, but really my engagements are not about that anymore because uh, the, the human behavior is, uh, in my opinion, so much more important. And there's also uh, not very many people that focus on human behavior in the data space. Yeah, it's true. It's very true. Yeah. But and it is, again, it, people, I, I'm with you. I hear so many people mention how important it is. And you're right. right. The most successful are do uh, focus on that. Right. I look at... Yeah. Uh, you know, I've, I've worked in a lot, many, many data governance and data management efforts all over the world in every continent, uh, every mm -hmm. continent except Antarctica. I haven't done one there yet. <laughs> but uh, uh, but um, uh, uh, all these efforts, and quite frankly, a, a lot of them were failures. A lot of them did not succeed. They canceled the program or they didn't create the value that they wanted. And then there's a yeah. handful that I'm so proud of that were so successful. And when I look back at them, uh, like one distribution company, it was all about trust. It was all mm -hmm. about trust. And the trust uh, transcends into their systems where the systems are connected and integrated. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, another one, it was all about purpose. A medical organization, they're all focused on purpose, about saving people's lives. And that... Uh, got brought into the system. Another one was student information. 
It was all about collaboration and working together. And these people that were on their way out of the system created one of the most successful teams I've ever seen. But it was all through the human dynamic involved. Uh, so um, I love just helping or organizations do that. So that's what I study now, all different frameworks and techniques. Oh, that's so cool. Well, I do want to back it up just a, a little bit because um, you mentioned, you know, how did how did you go from being a DBA to getting into, you know, stretching out into data governance? So, you know, there is a natural progression to data modeling, right? You know, right. But, you know, how do you, how did you get into the different aspects of data management there? Because so many DBAs don't, right? They, it's not the path for them. But yeah, that's actually also a very difficult transition. Yeah. So I thought I cut my teeth on the real technical stuff. So mm -hmm. I uh, knew how to tune and I knew how to, how to uh, look at issues and, um, and, and I knew the databases, you know, I worked on IBM databases and of course I got Oracle training. So I knew Oracle databases really well. Right. Um, and, um, and from there I expanded out into architecture and modeling and looking at more of the big picture and I, and what I did is um, started out, and a lot of people ask me this, I started out not really as a consultant, uh, it more as a contractor. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a consultant too, because I'm doing six month engagements and, and one year engagements. So I did things like that for several years. Um, and, uh, uh, but what I really wanted to do is get in and be a specialist and say, okay, I want to do uh, you know, 10 days at this company and 10 days at that company. And I made a big leap. So first I made the leap from technical to architecture, because you could mm -hmm. see what's happening technical. And then I worked with many great data models and great data architects. And I learned those skills. Mm -hmm. um, so that was one transition. And then another transition was from contractor or six months to uh, 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 being a consultant where my uh, jobs through my company, Universal Data Models, it's the same company, but with a different name, uh, uh, were, were all 10 day engagements um, or mm -hmm. five day engagements or three day engagements. Mm -hmm. And I would have many clients at a time and pop around and I did it all over the world. I did it in the Middle East and Europe and all over. That's uh, very cool. And, uh, uh, but, but in order to make that transition, it was actually a very difficult transition. I had to, well, I had to write books um, mm -hmm. to, to show. I had to have uh, a lot of material that I could bring. So there was a lot of value there in the three days or 10 days and mm -hmm. really hone in on learning one particular skill. In my case, it was data modeling. Oh, and then from there, I expanded out to data governance because a lot of my clients would ask me to do data governance work from data modeling. Um, Very interesting, so I, yeah. I developed a whole methodology on that and techniques on that and also brought value to the data. So there was a need, that a demand for you to learn these skills as you progressed. There was, yeah, there was. And then I saw there was a, uh, a need for the culture uh yeah. even though ironically not as much demand yeah but more of a need <laughs> it's more of a need yes <laughs> and and the other way i look at it too is is uh you know we have this life and there's limited time in this life you know do right. what you love do what is most important uh, and and what i think is most important is a skill of learning how to how to live the best life, and that includes in corporations. And people yeah. draw this artificial line between corporations and personal. They say, "Oh, I can't express right. emotions, or I can't." No, 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 no. You have to um, bring yourself in fully, um, and and uh, and learn how to live. Um, taking the marrow off the bone, you know, in, in yeah, corporate sure. culture, how do we do that? How do we make the most out of it? And by the way, if we do that, we can create amazing successes in data in data management and data governance and data strategies and data architecture. Yeah. I 
feel like there's a lot more conversation around creating that kind of culture since the pandemic, especially, uh, yeah. uh, you know, it gave people a new perspective, <laughs> really yeah. searching for what's important. Right. Do, yeah. Right. And I, and I also do that in my Zen with Len practice where I coach people personally. Mm -hmm. and actually, actually, every Monday I run a I run a session at four thirty Mountain Time every Monday where I'll give a talk on some life subject uh, online. So these are online sessions. So that yeah. is your second business, Send with Len. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So tell me a little bit about that as well. Yeah, that's where I do uh, 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 lead retreats. So I've mm -hmm. uh, uh, studied. Um, uh, Eastern philosophies and, mm -hmm. and all actually all different philosophies, Eastern and Western philosophies for for decades as well. So while I was doing the data work, I, I got ordained as a Zen priest and uh, uh, spent mm -hmm. actually hundreds of days uh, in silent meditation retreats. Wow. Uh, yeah. Sometimes attending, sometimes leading, uh, and um, so um, so that's another way that I give back uh you know, like for instance this monday session is there's no cost to it people just come and uh listen and meditate and i nice uh, uh and and share and uh nice so uh and then uh at, at data conferences as, as you know i uh i lead uh meditation retreats at uh, not meditation retreats but small uh zen with len sessions at the sessions. conferences and thank you so much data by the way thank you dataversity for uh <laughs> for sponsoring a lot of the zen with len uh talks that i give uh oh my well. gosh yeah it was, they, people love them yeah. it's it's an easy decision right <laughs> it's full all the time you know i've had uh people uh um that have come to these sessions and what i share mm -hmm. is a challenge i show multiple meditation techniques. And there's a lot mm -hmm. on my website on zenwithlen.com, uh, uh, videos sh showing how to meditate. And I say, just one minute a day, one minute a day. Uh, I, and people have come to me saying it's really made a difference in their life. One guy um, said, uh, you know, um, I've done this for two years. I even encourage people to uh, ping me on my cell phone uh, yeah. saying, hey, have you meditated? He did it for two years. I said, man, I feel so bad I'm pinging you on the cell phone. I'm like no 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 that's great and he said it's changed his <laughs> life one minute a day just one minute oh. a day because yeah. people don't stop and uh yeah. and just to stop for a minute uh you know you rewire your brain in 45 seconds just yeah. to stop for one minute makes a difference yes indeed very much so um yeah i i certainly have experienced that <laughs> myself so it, it's very lovely to pause um throughout the day uh and i want to come back to that a little bit as well but um but so just getting back a little bit into your into your data career you know having worked with data for so long um what is your definition of data mm. you know i've asked uh many different industry experts their definitions uh -huh. of data too uh because -huh. uh, i really believe in having a good business glossary and really understanding and yeah. uh the way i see data is data is actually derived from the word datum the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the latin word datum uh but by the way some people say oh data is information data is facts uh, uh there's a real big difference between data and facts mm -hmm. um uh facts are something factual data from the word datum uh, singular means something that is given that's oh. all it means, something that is given to uh -huh. us. So you're giving me all this data visually, auditorially, sure. uh, uh, whatever we touch and feel is data. Everything that is given to us in any of our senses is data. Uh, and, uh, and, and data just is the plural of data. Uh, uh -huh. So what it means is something given to us. Uh, it doesn't, it could be a figure, uh, it could be a number, it could be text, it could be a smell, it could be a feeling, mm -hmm. it could be a thought, it could be anything that we sense. 
and things that we don't sense. <laughs> Indeed, that's a great definition, and, and certainly one I haven't heard. I learned something every every interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I say Zen and data. Yeah. are 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 so intertwined because sure. zen, zen, zen is a japanese word that means awareness right. what are we aware of we're aware of the data uh everything all right everything that we come in contact with is data that is so very true yeah. that's a great definition uh, except, except we're generally not aware of 99 percent of the data <laughs> So we're not, there's so much happening. So if we could increase our awareness from, from like 1% to 1.1%, yeah. we're doing well. Well, I think that's why you qualify, right? So data, so things that we perceived and unperceived <laughs> that <Right>. we're receiving. <laughs> right, right. Still, still data. It's just not unperceived data. Right. <laughs> So um, do you see the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? Yeah, I see it uh, uh, increasing dramatically. That mm -hmm. um, uh, data is growing exponentially. Um, uh, the, the last time I looked on the uh, internet, we create 2.5 quintillion bytes of information yeah. uh, every day. Uh, yeah. Uh, most people don't know what a quintillion is. Is one with 18 zeros after it? Like if you took a quintillion and you took a quintillion pennies, yeah. you could cover the Earth's surface with a quintillion penny five times. Wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you took pennies and laid it out over the entire Earth. Uh, it's, we're creating tremendous, tremendous amounts of data. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think that's one of the biggest issues that I talk about, that we're overloaded with data. It's, so much data coming in. Right, yeah, it's it's very true. Um, so what advice would you give to people looking to get into a career in data management? You know, in my uh, human behavior uh, my classes, I, I, I often will say, be grounded in your purpose, be grounded mm -hmm. in your motivations. In my coaching practice, I, um, I have a uh, methodology called values determination. Let's say, what are the greatest values? And I love acronyms. So I created an acronym for this that's called live presently. And for every mm. letter, there is an exploration. Um, so like, for instance, for L, what do I love to learn about? Uh, I, what inspires me? V, what do I visualize? E, what energizes? Mm. Uh, then presently, P, what do I purchase? And so on. And I go through a process with people of saying, hey, what is their real passion? What is their gifts? What do they love? Um, and what I would say is follow your passion, follow what you love, and look at the opportunity. Um, I uh, found an opportunity. One of the other reasons I follow data modeling is because data modeling is all about a puzzle. Mm -hmm. And I love figuring out puzzles. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. And uh, it's just how I'm wired. So, uh, so follow, uh, do exploration. So I would say in data management, there's a lot of different careers. Um, follow and, and do some exploration to say what might fit you uh, more appropriately. And it'll change over time. Like I shared with you, my career has changed. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So, uh, yeah to do this at, at different points in time. Oh, such great advice. And uh, yeah, you know, it's so true. And like you say, it's in data, there's so many different job types working with data. You can, and there, you can work in any industry with, when you're working with data. Uh, I, absolutely. I've worked in so many different industries. Yeah. 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 Dozens of industries. Uh, so, Len, so I would be remiss if I didn't ask, uh, uh, you mentioned your Zen with Len URL already. If you want to mention it again, like we'll make sure, check out your Monday sessions. Yeah, if anybody's at all interested, just go to zenwithlen.com, go mm -hmm. to the events session. There's a weekly meditation 
um, uh, that you could just get a link to and join us. We we uh, start off with a meditation, and then we do sharing, and then we uh, and then I give a talk on um, uh, some life topic. Um, nice. It might be on trust. It might be on letting go of identity. It might be on. It could even. It might even be on career path, uh, <laughs> or uh, it could be on any topic. Uh, and, yeah. uh And I uh, um, teach from a Zen perspective. There's usually a story involved and and some practical tip. Uh, and often there's discussion after that of uh, okay, what did what did you uh, what did, what what are your insights. From this, what are your questions from this? Uh, um, so, uh, if you uh, if you like, you can email me at len at zenwithlen.com uh, right. and uh, ask any questions if I can if I can help you uh, and or join our uh, uh, Monday session or uh, look at the uh, videos that are on the site or uh, and um, I don't charge for any of that and then. Uh, I do personal coaching for people if they want, and the first session uh, is usually complimentary. Um, so, uh, nice. Um, uh, if I can help any way, uh, I'm glad to do it. Uh, and and if somebody wants to solicit your services from Universal Mindful to help in understanding and building a collaborative culture, how do they reach you there? Yeah, just go to um, Universal mindful.com mm -hmm. and uh, my email there is l silverston at univ for universal uh univdata.com mm -hmm. uh, so univ for universal and data like information univdata.com and nice. uh, uh they can reach me that way l silverston uh, uh silver and an s-t-o-n and we'll grab those links um, from you and make sure and get that posted on the podcast page for everybody. Yeah. So Len, this has been so fun. I really enjoyed this conversation. Oh, it, uh, it's been my pleasure. My uh, pleasure. And uh, thank you to everybody listening. So, oh, uh, Len, again, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. Really appreciate yeah, my, it. My pleasure. To all of our listeners out there, if you want to keep up to date in the latest in podcasts and the latest in data management education, you may go to datarecity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time, stay curious, everyone. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at datarecity.net forward slash subscribe. Thank you.